from KUNC and the NPR Network, this is In the NoCo, a daily slice of Northern Colorado news and happenings. It's Friday, April 19th. I'm Erin O'Toole. While Colorado may be known for having breweries on every corner, there's a new trend in town, cocktails without the alcohol. The popularity of non-alcoholic drinks is soaring, especially among young adults. More bars and restaurants are featuring creative mocktails on their menus. At the moment, Colorado has only a few completely sober spaces where alcohol isn't served, but some mixologists are hoping to change that. KUNC reporter and host Emma Vanden ID got a glimpse of how they're shaking up the nightlife for the sober and sober curious, and she joins us now. Hey, Emma, welcome back. Hi, Erin. Glad to be back. So one of the mixologists that you interviewed for your story, Han Casera, is opening up the first completely sober bar in Loveland. Yeah, it's called The Love Shack. It's a play on the B-52 song. <laughs> I love that. It's so fun. So what prompted Han to want to do this? So Han wasn't originally planning to open up this uh, completely sober bar. He used to DJ in the Denver area. And so mm. he was completely surrounded by drugs and alcohol. And he didn't feel like he had to drink every day, but he felt that when he drank, he was making poor decisions. And it wasn't long before that drinking put him in a county jail for 36 hours. Mm. And this was kind of a moment where he was rethinking his life, was like, you know, OK, I've been giving this second chance. Like, what am I going to do with it? And he decided to be sober. But whenever he would go out, he would feel shame when he would order non-alcoholic drinks. And he really missed that DJ life. He missed listening to live music, missed dancing. And whenever he would try to put himself in that space, his options would be a soda mm. or some cranberry juice. He just wanted to create a space for the sober community to have fun. So here's what he had to say about the sober community in northern Colorado. It's growing and people are catching on that like, hey, we are healthier and happier and it feels good to be able to still do these activities where we don't feel like we have to stay at home or be left out of the, you know, the fun nightlife environments. Exactly. I love how inclusive that thought is and just sort of embracing the notion that having a good time does not automatically need to include alcohol. So I know mocktails have become a growing trend around the nation. Is this true for northern Colorado as well? Yes, definitely. Around the nation, um, these numbers are soaring. Nielsen IQ said the drinks brought in more than $500 million in revenue nationwide last year. That's a 30% increase. And Fort Collins is seeing this trend as well. The bar Social saw a nearly 50% increase in the net amount of non-alcoholic cocktails sold between 2022 and 2023, and they expect to see an increase again this year. There was also a 63% increase in the sales between last January and this January, which is typically known as dry January. Sure. But this is something that's still budding. I mean, there's a reason that this is the first sober bar that Han is putting out there, and most of the bars in Fort Collins have a non-alcoholic menu, but the bulk of their revenue is still coming from those boozy drinks because if you're going into a bar, chances are you're looking for a cocktail, not a mocktail. Sure, sure. Well, now you've got me really curious about some of these drinks. What were some of the mocktails that Han made for you? Oh man, he had so many great drinks. All of his drinks are named after songs um, because he I love you know, was playing on that Love Shack theme. And the first one is More Passion, More Energy. Um, it's named after a popular TikTok song that has passion fruit, mango, coconut water, lime, and like some non-alcoholic ginger beer. He also made one called I Put a Spell on You, which is a play on a no hito. So like a mojito, but with no alcohol mm. that has mint, lime, simple syrup, also some N.A. ginger beer. And then his last one that he made for me was the Macarena. It's like a mock margarita. So kind of like that kind of play on words. And that had grapefruit, jalapeno, lime, simple syrup, and sparkling water. Emma, all these sound so good. I am a huge margarita fan. I think I would love to try the Macarena. So Han is the first to create a sober bar in northern Colorado, but he is not the first person to jump on this trend, right? Yeah, there is actually um, a woman who came before him. Her, her name was Taylor Stoltz. She's the creator of Herbal Mocktails. It's not a brick and mortar business. It's actually something that she puts up at farmer's markets. She goes to event venues and sells her mocktails. 
And she was never an alcoholic. She just had one really bad night of drinking at a friend's wedding. And Mm. I'm sure we've all been there before. And it was just like, yep, this is too much. I need to be done. And she had the same kind of realization that Han did of like, hey, the drinks that are here are kind of like boring. Like they are like soda or juice. And like even some of the mocktails that she found, she described them as, quote, syrupy and gross. And she was like, I just want to create something better, like something that, you know, uses natural, maybe even foraged ingredients is her take on it. And she just wants her drinks to not be lame. So I want people to enjoy my drink. I want it to be refreshing and I want it to like look like a cocktail where it's pretty and it's like fun and people see that and they're like, whoa, where'd you get that? Yeah. I mean, I can see this appealing to not only people who are in sobriety, but to people who are sober curious or who just want to cut back on their alcohol consumption, but who feel let down when their only option, like you mentioned, is is water or, you know, flat soda from the bar gun. Emma, what are these mixologists seeing in response to what they are doing? You know, Erin, I think there was a woman I talked to, Lacey Malley from Johnstown, that kind of sums up all the responses that Han and Taylor have been receiving. She is a resident from Johnstown that came to this mixology event that Taylor was putting on a month or so ago. She was sober for a little over a year when she came to this event, and she was just looking for a fun, not boring, sober event. Like, she was looking for fun things to do, but there just wasn't anything until she found this. And this event was just something different. There was all these, like, pretty glasses and they Taylor had like these little like lavender sticks that you could pop into the drink and it was just very instagrammable is I guess the word I would put to it that's really what Casera and Stoltz are trying to create this idea that you can have a non-alcoholic drink and you can enjoy the atmosphere too well all of this talk about mocktails really makes me want to try out some of my own did the mixologist give any tips about how to make a good recipe Yeah, Taylor gave me three main tips to give people as she was setting up for that mixology event. Watch your water, watch your sugar, and don't be afraid to experiment. Her point was that water can really ruin a good mocktail if you dilute it down. So you might want to find other alternatives like simple syrup or maybe some sparkling water with some sort of like juice additive like lemon sparkling water. And you might not need simple syrup if you're using something naturally sweet like berries in your cocktail. And as far as experimenting, you know, there are plenty of good websites online that have mocktail ideas, but it's important to trust your gut. You know, keep trying things over and over. If you really like blackberries, try adding blackberries into something and see, you know, what flavor combinations taste good. Even if a recipe says one thing, if you want to add a little bit more lemon water or a little bit more blackberries, you can do so. There's no rules to this. It's just about having fun. All right. Well, I am excited to get mixing. Emma, thank you so much for coming on to talk about this. You're welcome. Glad to be here. Han Casera is hoping to open his club in Loveland this fall. You'll find more information in our show notes and at KUNC.org. That's it for us today here on In the NoCo. We'll be back next week with more of what's happening in Northern Colorado. Our theme music was composed by Colorado artist Robbie Reverb. I'm your host, Darren O'Toole. Have a great weekend.